guys, it is the day after Thanksgiving and a lot of people spend this Black Friday out shopping trying to look for deals. So I thought that today I would address how to really save money on food, both on the short term and in the long term. These are all things that I myself have either done or people I know have done. It's how I got by when I was severely impoverished and it is things that I still do today even though I'm not severely impoverished, but it keeps me with more money in my wallet. I've also divided this list into three sections. The first section is what you can do at the grocery store. The second section is what you can do with your lifestyle in general. And the third section is what you can do with your friends, family, and community at large to save money on food. So here is 22 ways to save money on food. So number one is change where you shop. This is kind of a no-brainer, but some people are still going to stores like Safeway and, and thinking, oh, I'll save money on food by buying, you know, because it's not Whole Foods at least, you know, it's kind of cheaper, it's mainstream. But Safeway is actually one of the moderately priced places. Look for places and really compare prices, like shop around at other stores and compare prices. Generally speaking, if you really want just cheap, cheap, cheap food, something like Target, Walmart, I swear by Winco, Fred Meyer, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, sometimes you can get great deals on the internet, especially on non-perishable foods. And another place that a lot of people overlook, but I highly recommend you look into your local small uh, mom and pop grocery stores from people that might be immigrants. So a lot of my favorite grocery stores have been my local Asian Mart. I have a local Indian slash Middle Eastern slash Mexican market that I love. They have amazing cheap deals on so many things in these stores. Like some of their items are more expensive, but some of their items like spices are way, way cheaper at those stores. So look for those stores and shop around. Number two, when you are shopping, check the price per ounce. So don't be fooled into thinking, oh, this thing is cheaper because it's on sale, or oh, this thing must be cheaper because it's the bigger version of the thing, and things tend to be cheaper if more of it is sold in a unit instead of less of it in a unit. But always, always check the price per ounce, and the grocery store will almost always have that price per ounce for you in the price, so you don't have to do the math, they do the math for you. Check that price per ounce. And going with that, if the price is per ounce, Ounce, when you're looking at things like apples or pineapples or something, then get whatever size pineapple you want for that particular application. But if the price is each, always get the biggest that you can find because that will give you the best deal. Number three is check the price per calorie. This is something a lot of people don't think about when they're saving money on food or trying to save money on food. And in some other like thrifty, this is how you save money on groceries. This is how I spent $10 in a week videos that I've seen. The, the people aren't eating enough calories. You know, they might be eating three meals a day, but if you look at those calories, it's not enough. You probably have a 2000 calorie a day diet or something around there. Find out what your dietary needs are. It's pretty easy to find that out online. And check the price per calorie. Something like um, flour. White flour is always my favorite example to go to because not only is it really cheap, but the price per calorie ratio is pretty good because flour is starchy, it's pretty caloric. But something like lettuce, for example, um, I got a head of butter lettuce recently and it costs $3. And not only is that kind of expensive for lettuce, but if you can't really sustain yourself eating lettuce. If I ate that whole head of lettuce, like that might be 50 calories, 100 calories in the whole head of lettuce that I paid $3 for. So look at that price per calorie. And if you're really trying to save money on food and just survive, uh, you should try to buy things that cost less per calorie rather than per volume. Rule number four is if you're going to buy spices, for one thing, you can save money by not buying spices because they don't really have any caloric value. The price per calorie there is a lot of money per calorie because spices are calorie free. They don't give you any food. They don't fill you at all. But if you're going to buy spices, uh, you can get good deals if you buy them either um, online sometimes or like I said earlier, those mom and pop shops of people not necessarily from the United States, they tend to have really good deals on spices. And then as I always swear by the bulk section of Winco, you can go there and not only buy whatever amount of spice you want, even like a teaspoon, at bulk prices, at wholesale prices, but <laughs> you know they're cheap prices and you can buy as little as you want or as much as you want. So your spices aren't gonna go bad or if you only need like a tablespoon of cardamom for 
two recipes and you don't think you're going to need any more cardamom than that later, you can just get the one tablespoon of cardamom at Winco if you want. So never get your spices from a typical grocery store in those like McCormick bottles. That's always a really bad deal. Rule number five is starch is your friend. So starch is not always the healthiest thing to eat. As I said earlier, there's this like nutrition and price compromise when you're trying to be cheap and save money on food and still live relatively healthfully. But starch is your friend. If you base pretty much all of your meals around starch, flour, potatoes, rice, pasta, they're much more likely to be cheaper meals because all of those ingredients, even if you buy the most expensive version of them, they're gonna be pretty cheap. Rule number six, and this one comes with a little caveat, but buy in bulk. When I say buy in bulk, my favorite way, of course, to buy in bulk is from a bulk bin situation. Um, I've seen these even at stores like Safeway, but especially at Winco, I love their bulk bin section. There's just so many things and you can get like just a cup of rice at a wholesale bulk price if you want to. The dangers of buying in bulk, as in like buying a giant bag of flour or buying like a giant box of apples or something is of course it could go bad even if it is a non-perishable thing, like flour, you think that's not perishable. Um, the government in the United States allows at least a very small percentage of bugs or bug eggs to be in all food. And pretty much any grain you buy is guaranteed to at least have an egg or two of some insect. And if you leave it around long enough, they'll hatch and you could ruin your whole giant bag of flour if you get too much of it and don't eat it in time. So the other danger of buying like a giant thing of something in bulk is that that might just encourage you to eat more of it because you're like, oh, I have so much of it. I can just eat more of it. And you're not exactly saving money in that instance. You're just eating more. So buy bulk, but be smart about it. Rule number seven is buy generic. But if you buy generic, still check the price per ounce because sometimes a brand name product will be actually cheaper than the generic brand. You'll find that there are some products where like the generic brand really won't cut it. But in most cases, I found the generic brand is just as good as the name brand. So get generic. Rule number eight is bring your own bags. Now the laws are changing all over the country. I just left California and there they had outruled completely plastic bags and you have to bring your own bags. Um, and where I'm at now, some stores like charge you money actually if you have to use their plastic bags or paper bags. Um, but a lot of stores give you a discount if you bring your own bags. And you may think, oh, but it's an investment up front. You have to still buy those, you know, canvas bags or whatever. Um, yeah, but I mean, chances are you probably already have some you know, non-disposable bags lying around your house. You can even reuse, like if you have a thick, heavy duty plastic bag that you got at a mall or something, you can keep reusing that. And also when I didn't have a car, uh, whenever I went shopping for groceries, I would always just bring a big backpack with me because that's the easiest way to carry them home. And I just fill that entire backpack with groceries. That counts. It doesn't have to be like the fancy canvas bag that you buy at the grocery store itself. It can be any old bag that is reusable. Bring your own bags and you might get a discount. Rule number nine is beware of coupons and apps. The thing about coupons is they often get you to buy things that you wouldn't have bought in the first place, either something that is already kind of a luxury good or something that you didn't necessarily need. And if you weren't planning on buying it, you might not use it, it might go bad, or if it's a luxury good, you know, you might not really be saving money on it because it's cheaper to just not buy the thing at all. So with coupons, just be really, really careful. Um, I only really use a coupon if it's something that I want anyway, and if it actually does make the item cheaper. They're gonna usually be for name brand things too, and sometimes even with the coupon, the generic is still cheaper. So beware of coupons and apps. Sometimes you can get good deals on them, but a lot of times they just kind of force you to buy more stuff that you don't necessarily need. So now we're into the lifestyle changes section of the the list and on to item number 10. Never eat at restaurants. Even if it's a cheap restaurant, even if it's discount, even if you have coupons, etc., chances are whatever it is you're gonna get at that restaurant, you can make cheaper for yourself at home, or you can just eat something cheaper at home. You know, don't go to a steakhouse and have a steak, obviously, because steak is expensive to begin with, and then if you have it at a restaurant, it's even more expensive. But yeah, that's just common sense. Food is pretty much always cheaper if you prepare it at home. I understand if you're pressed for time, you know, you, you might not have as many options, but generally speaking, if you can 
avoid restaurants altogether outright if you're trying to save money on food. Number 11, be that person who brings Tupperware to potlucks. <laughs> you know, you might get some funny looks. Uh, people shouldn't judge you, by the way. I think that's perfectly acceptable. You're not being wasteful. You know, that food might have been thrown away anyway. Like, you're, you're doing a service, actually, by bringing Tupperware and taking the leftovers home. Uh, anyway, yeah, bring, be that person who brings Tupperware to potlucks. Bring, you know, just have, have some Tupperware in your car. You know, you never know when you might need it. Keep, keep a Tupperware in your purse. You never know when you might need it. And yeah, if there's ever food that someone's like gonna throw away, like a half-eaten sandwich, or if there's stuff left over at a potluck, take it, be shameless free food. I did this a lot actually in college, um, especially in grad school. I was really poor for like one semester. Um, I, I suddenly had to like pay rent in an apartment all by myself when I was used to paying for having a roommate and I was like, I couldn't afford it. And so I had to save as much money as possible. And for a while, um, I worked up in the costume shop of the theater department and whenever they put on a production, a play or a dance concert or anything, they'd have a big potluck during um, Tech Sunday before the dress rehearsals. and the fridge up at the costume shop would be full of those leftovers and pretty much the entire week after a tech sunday i would eat like all three meals for free <laughs> and like i needed that because i really didn't have money to be spending on food and it was a lot of the food was not very tasty you know a lot of college kids don't really know how to cook very well but you know it, it was food and it saved me Item number 12 is something I've never done before myself, but uh, we really need to reduce the stigma, and that's dumpster dive. Restaurants, grocery stores, people, like they throw away perfectly good food sometimes. Like it's still in its packaging. It's not contaminated by the other things in the dumpster. It hasn't necessarily gone bad. It's just maybe like at the expiration date, which means it's not legal to sell it, but it's usually still okay, like on the expiration date. But yeah, if you're smart about it, there's whole communities of people who can tell you how to do this. But yeah, you can actually get pretty decent food in the United States out of dumpsters, like literally out of the dumpster sometimes or next to the dumpster. Again, it's something that I myself have never done. By the time I learned that this was even a thing, I wasn't like that desperate anymore for food. But yeah, in the United States in particular, like a lot of people throw away perfectly good food. So dumpster dive. Item number 13 is definitely something I've done a lot of. <laughs> it is save those seasoning packets those little packets of parm those little packets of red pepper flakes those little packets of soy sauce those little packets of sugar or jam save all of those things if you ever find yourself going out to eat at a restaurant slip some into your purse if your friends go out to eat at a restaurant have them slip some into their purse if your friends or roommates order a pizza and you're not eating any because you're poor and you can't afford to chip in for the pizza but they get a lot of little you know red pepper flake packets parm packets, save those. Uh, back when I lived with my brother for a while, I was really poor. Uh, he'd order pizza a lot. He'd bring it home and he'd have like, you know, four little packets of parm and four little packets of red pepper flakes left over. And he was just going to throw them away, but I would always rescue them from the trash. And those little packets of parm, I would turn that into poor man's fettuccine Alfredo. I'd throw it in with some pasta and like a little butter and it made it taste a lot better um, and those red pepper flakes i i became like that became my main spice that i used and to this day i still love red pepper flakes because there was always free red pepper flakes to be found in our household rule number 14 and this is a big one don't throw away food like ever uh, find ways to not throw it away. I'm gonna have a whole other video actually talking about how to not throw away food. because It's a huge problem. In the United States alone, we throw away 40% of our food. A lot of that is grocery stores throwing away their, you know, expired milk and stuff, and a lot of it's restaurants throwing away food. But even individuals like you and me, a lot of people throw food away that you know, we might throw it away because it's rotten. We might throw it away because like we just decided we don't like it anymore. Um, a lot of people throw away food without even thinking. It's one of my biggest pet peeves when I see people throwing away food. It makes me so angry. <laughs> so don't throw away food. Number 15, and I, I really miss having the ability to do this on a bigger scale, but grow your own food if possible. If you're lucky enough to live in a house and you have a lot of dirt grow stuff in it. Um, you're not necessarily going to save money depending on what you grow and depending on how good a gardener you are. 
but it is something that you can do. And even now I live in an apartment. We have like a tiny little slab of concrete as a like balcony. We're on the first floor, so we don't really have a balcony, <laughs> but we, we have like a bunch of planters covering almost the entire little slab of concrete that we have to grow some cherry tomatoes and herbs. Uh, growing the herbs uh, saves us a lot of money actually, because usually when you buy a fresh herb, you have to buy like $4 worth of it, even if you're only gonna use like one sprig of thyme, and then you have to dry the rest of it, and it's much cheaper to just buy dried thyme in that case. So actually having fresh herbs does save money, and it's something that you can do even if you live in a tiny apartment like we do. So the next items on this list are things that you can do with your friends, family, um, and greater community at large to save money on food. So number 16 is make friends with, or at least talk to your friends and neighbors who have fruit trees and such. Uh, I go on walks regularly around my neighborhood and inevitably I'll find that neighbor who has a lemon tree, that neighbor who has an orange tree, that neighbor who, now that I'm in Washington, that neighbor who has apple trees. Uh, walking around just in my apartment complex, there's apple trees in the, the uh, parking lot. Um, they're kind of hard to reach, but like sometimes I'll go there and I'll get free apples. And like chances are like back when I was living in a house and I had fruit trees in the front yard, it was usually bumper crops and I couldn't very easily use everything myself. So ask, like most people are pretty happy to give away their overabundance of food that they happen to have. Number 17, reduce the other costs of your life if at all possible. So everyone's situation is different. I'm not saying, oh, if you don't have enough money to spend on food, it's because you bought that new iPhone. Don't buy an iPhone. Like, A, people kind of need smartphones in today's society to get jobs and get ahead and function. Uh, but B, um, you know, there are probably some ways that you can um, reduce the, the cost of the other areas of life if you really want to make food a priority in your life or if you're really at this point where you don't have enough money for food. It might mean getting a roommate. It might mean moving, giving up your second car if you're a two-car household. Um, these are things to think about, you know, and these are, I, I wish people didn't have to choose between, like, having a place all to themselves to live in and having enough food to eat. Like I wish that we had a better society that people didn't have to make those kinds of choices. Uh, but again, whatever is in your control, try to do what you can to reduce the other costs of the other areas of your life so that you can prioritize food. Because again, food is life. To me, food is like one of the most important things for having a good quality of life. And if there's any way that you can reduce those other costs of your life, do it. Number 18 is increase your income, if at all possible. And again, I understand some people in this country are working like three part-time jobs because less and less employers are hiring full-time workers and wages have been stagnant, etc. So I understand that just, I'm not telling you guys, oh, just go out and get another job, man. Like, I'm not like that. But, you know, if, if you do have that possibility, try to do that. Also, you know, try to sell a bunch of your stuff. Uh, last year, at the beginning of the year, actually it was this year, things got a little bit, a little bit iffy for me. And so I, I just started selling a bunch of my stuff. It's just stuff, you know. I don't really care, it was just sitting around. Uh, and so I sold it and I got some money. So you can do that too. Number 19 is reach out. Like don't be afraid to tell your friends, your family, um, your book club, your church, wherever you go to, don't be afraid to tell people that you need help. Uh, you know, those people generally are happy to help you if they know that you need help but you're not gonna get help unless you tell people you need help. Number 20 is reach out to your community. Now I mentioned church earlier. Um, this can be also, the internet is such a great resource nowadays. There's Free Cycle. It's a group of people basically where you join a Facebook group or you know, it's just, it's not even always on Facebook, but look for your local Free Cycle group in the area or your local Buy Nothing group in the area. And it's basically a bunch of people on the barter system, the old fashioned barter system. And you can get all kinds of free stuff there. You can get rid of stuff for free there. Typically the rule is like, you have to go pick up whatever it is, but I've seen some Sometimes, like people offering food for free on those groups. Number 21, and this is something that I could have done and I didn't do and I wish that I had done, and that is reach out to the government. <laughs> so if you're like me, uh, you might be too proud to sign up for food stamps, but I definitely qualified for food stamps back in grad school and I did not even apply. I was too proud. I was like, oh, I, I, I shouldn't 
take them. There's probably people out there that are worse off than I am and they need them. It's like, Sarah, you're eating instant mashed potatoes your brother left behind, reconstituted in water and fried in oil. That's not very healthy. Your hair is getting all frizzy and falling out and your skin's getting all dry. That, that happened to me. And if I'd gotten food stamps, I would have been able to eat healthy food and I, I would have been able to be healthier. I would have been able, like my brain would have worked better. <laughs> food is really important, guys. So yeah, don't be afraid to reach out to your government and get the services. These are services that we pay taxes for. So you're entitled to it. Like, don't be too proud to reach out for it. Uh, WIC if you're a parent, food stamps, you know, EBT if you're a person, um, school lunches for your children. Do, do not be too proud to sign up for those programs if you qualify and if you are in need. And that segues perfectly into the last item, 22 on this list, and that is vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for or which way to vote for, but uh, the policies that our politicians, both local and federal, enact do affect our lives. And there is something that you can do uh, in any way that you can get involved uh, with your local politics, write letters to your Congress people, uh, keep up with uh, what's going on in, in your country and in the world, and see if there's anything that you can do to try to change the systems in place that will improve your situation and the situation of others whatever that means to you. So those were all my thoughts on saving money on food on this Black Friday. Uh, as I said, I'm recording this Thanksgiving day. Uh, so tomorrow on Black Friday, I'm going to do absolutely nothing. I'm going to stay home and hide. <laughs> That's pretty much what I do every year on Black Friday. I don't shop. I stay home and hide. Hope you guys all had a wonderful Thanksgiving if you celebrate and I'll see you next Friday.